What's up everybody, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to show you how to fix a super common issue on the second gen Tacomas. And that super common issue is, let's adjust this real quick. When your blower motor only works on the highest setting. So these first three settings don't work. And then the second it clicks over to the high, that's when it'll turn on. Now obviously it wasn't working on any of my settings right now, but that's because the truck is off. So if that was any question, that's why. The only tools you're gonna need for this are a five and a half millimeter socket and a soldering iron. And if you don't wanna solder anything, then you can actually just get like some of the wire crimps and just crimp them together. That would work as well. But if you've watched any of my other previous videos, then you know that I prefer really good solid connections. And so I'm gonna be using a soldering iron to solder those wires together and ensure that I have the best connection possible. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna use an iPhone to get this shot because it is rather tight. So underneath the dash of the passenger side, you have the blower motor right here. And then the resistor that you're gonna be taking out is gonna be this one right here. You can see you have a bolt right there and then there's one on the back side. Those are the five and a half millimeter bolts that I was talking about. Once you undo those, this whole unit is just gonna drop out from there and it's gonna look like this. So this is the replacement unit. You can see you've got the bolt right here. The other spot for the other bolt on the back side right there. That's basically the resistor chip that controls the different settings of your blower motor. And then you have the connector that connects into it and your wires. So once you undo those two bolts, this entire thing with your resistor is just gonna drop out. All right, so don't judge me on this because I'm doing it one-handed because I've got a phone in the other one that I'm trying to get this shot for you guys with. Okay, then the back side. I'm gonna set this down for a minute, but backside bolt is on this side, so take that out. All right, so this is the old resistor. This is the new one. You can see there is ob an obvious size difference between them. Um, this replacement one does still fit. There's not an issue with fitment there, so I think we'll be okay. Um, but maybe this is just like a difference in 11 years of innovation. I also didn't get an OEM replacement because I figured that like, if this only goes bad once every 10 years, then <laughs> it's not gonna be something that I need to replace very often. So I just bought an aftermarket one. This is the aftermarket one. This is the stock one. Go with what you feel. One thing I wanna point out is on the aftermarket connector, uh, it's all gray. So there's not any difference in color like there is on the stock one, which you can't see right now with the exposure. But you can see, if you zoom in here, so you can see on this connector, you do have some lettering, A, B, C, and D. Okay, so those that A, B, C, and D, that's gonna correlate with the wiring that plugs into the connector. So right there where it plugs in and clips in, you're gonna wanna make sure that as you're clipping your wires, you're connecting the replacement ones to the same one. So obviously A is gonna go to A, B to B, C to C, D to D. Got it? Cool. Looking at the wiring, you can kinda see where that connector right here is a little bit burnt out. Um, basically the reason why this goes bad is it just starts to overheat, the wiring goes bad and it kind of shorts out. And so yeah, you can see that mark on the back side right there. So that burn mark, that's kind of the reason why it's going bad. So we're gonna just cut these wires, solder in some new ones, put that new connector back in there and we should be good to go. So just so you're aware, you can see that on this you have A, B, C, and D as well. And if you get confused on which wires go where, just leave yourself a little bit of slack here and then you can use the green as reference. Now that's so the green and yellow is gonna be your A. You see that's gonna be down there. So you're gonna connect that to your aftermarket gray, which is also A. And then you'll use the same thing, kind of just like a template, right? So pretty simple. My connections are all soldered. Seems like they're good. Um, I'm gonna plug the resistor in just to make sure that everything works before I put it all back together. It's always a good idea to do that beforehand, just in case you made a mistake somewhere and you need to go back and fix it. But this is so easy that I'm like 99% 
confident that I did it right, but let's find out. All right, so we'll turn the key on. Blow in there. All right. Okay, so everything works. It works on all four of those settings now, whereas before it only worked on high. I kind of got around it and procrastinated fixing it for a while because I used to be able to just kind of bump the wire and it would start working again. Uh, but we're getting into winter, so I figured now is a good time to do it. So I will put a link in the video description down below to this resistor, just in case you guys want to do this on your own. And I'll link everything else that I used in the video. Let me know if you have any questions on any part of this down in the comments below. Uh, I'll be around for a while, so uh, make sure to answer them. Um, yeah, thanks a ton for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, if this didn't already become apparent, the reinstallation process is the exact same. All you have to do is just stick the resistor back in the, the slot that it came out, put the two bolts in, and you're done. So, all right, see ya.